I grew up in a small town, surrounded by nature. I went on to study biology and to become an ecologist. My first work experiences were in large wilderness areas. I was seeing firsthand the ecological interactions that took place in natural systems. But then I'd go home and visit, visit where my parents were, and I started to see changes happening. Vast areas cleared for development, strip malls popping up seemingly unplanned, and I saw changes to our beautiful lake, to the quality of that place that I really loved. It started to dawn on me that we create really dysfunctional habitats for ourselves. And seeing this in my own place, the place I loved, it made me sad, and it made me want to change it. And of course, we realize that it's not just in my little town. It's happening everywhere. It's becoming a global crisis, and it's something that we need solutions for. Now I work primarily in urban and suburban areas because I think that we can change the way that we construct and build our built environments. And I think that we can use nature as the design criteria for this. We need to move from one-way systems where we use m materials, energy, and water only once, and we create products that we then have to manage. We treat them as waste. We need to move to one where resources are used and recovered and reused again, closing that loop and creating cycles for hydrology, energy, and materials within our built environment. That way there is no waste. The byproduct of one process becomes what feeds the next system. That's what happens in ecosystems, and that's what we need to do in our own habitat. To demonstrate this, I'd like to show, share with you a project in Victoria, BC, Canada, called Dockside Green. This is a contaminated site with a long history of industrial use. It's 15 acres close to the downtown Victoria and next to a working harbor. So what can you do with a place like this? These exist everywhere, and they're hard, they're hard places to work with. But this city saw it as an opportunity to create a green demonstration community, and they sought out a developer that would make that vision come to life. So what was that vision? Well, it was 26 buildings with a central waterway going through it to connect it all together of mixed-use residential, commercial, hotels, light industrial, live work spaces, and affordable housing. All of the buildings are being built to lead platinum, which is the highest rated green buildings in North America. And this is all combined on site with integrated resource management for water, energy, and materials. The first feature that I'd like to share with you is about energy. Heat and hot water are some of the biggest energy users. And for this project, they've created an energy utility which has a biomass gasification plant that takes wood waste from local industry, brings it to the site, and uses that for the energy source here. They also have added renewables to some of the buildings, including wind and solar. So that talks about the energy component. What about water? That's another major resource. Well, to start with, there's a wastewater treatment plant that takes all of the black and gray water from the, from the site, treats it to a very high level, and then reuses it on the site for irrigation and toilet flushing. And I mentioned earlier that central waterway that ties it all together. Well, this greenway is a system of ponds and, and stream channels that also uses water from the treated wastewater plant as, a, uh, as the base flow and takes runoff from all of the hard surfaces on the site and treats it and detains it, protecting the downstream aquatic environments. It's created a habitat corridor and recreational opportunities on the site. And also, most interestingly, I think, it's taken what is often some of the least valued um, apartments at the very bottom of the buildings and put them in the middle of this beautiful ecosystem, making them extremely highly valuable and helping to make the business case for projects like this. So I've talked about the design and the construction, but what about the people? The people that, that live here and work here, how does it work for them? Well, as the previous speaker was saying, people work best when they can see. So the first thing that they did was integrate monitoring into each suite for electricity, heat, hot water, cold water, and other statistics so that the people that are there can see what they're using and they can control it. They can control it both in the suite and online uh, off-site. And how about the daily life? What's it like to live here? Well, there's green roofs on the buildings, and that, those help not only with rainwater management, but also create the opportunity for, for gardening in this very dense urban area, which helps with so, social connections and also with food security. 
Additionally, the household materials from this, from this project are collected in a very efficient way and reused and then recycled um, within the community. The last, the last picture I'd like to show you is stepping back, looking at the part of the project that has been built. And this shows the shoreline restoration project that's been completed as part of the, a park and some of the alternative transportation solutions, including a commuter bike trail, car co-op, and a harbor ferry which takes people to, de into downtown Victoria. So what have we learned from this? Well, we've learned that it's ecologically, financially, and socially viable. And people love it. They love being part of it, and they love being there. But we also need to go beyond this. We now can build really efficient buildings, and we're starting to build projects like this that bring them in and, and uh, start to combine these. But at this point, they're really just being done at dem as demonstration projects. This needs to become the way that we build. And in order to do that, we need the cultural and political support to do it. Then it will become the way that we actually do this. So how can we do this? Well, I think that we're creative and smart and adaptable species. So I think we need to use that. To start with, on this project, it's about 25% built. And what we're going to do is continue to learn from what, what we have already built and adapt and make the new parts even better. And to people that have the ability to work on large-scale built environment projects, I say to you, that I think that we have a responsibility to work together within an ecological framework. And that means that we can integrate resource management into every project. We can be innovative. And we can make these projects have a strong business case so that it does become the way that we build everything. But this also needs to be combined with work on the individual level, because we have an enormous built environment that also needs to change. So I think each person here and everybody out there can make a difference in their own habitat. We each have that place that we love and that we want to protect and make better. We can do the things that we know we're supposed to do, take public transportation, build a rain garden. We can install solar hot water. We can plant trees. And I think we can all do that, and we can all do that together. But what I really would like is for everybody to also take a step back and look at how your own habitat integrates into your neighborhood and the surrounding ecosystem. Then I think we can really do something good, and we can do it all together.